All right now, I'm about to verify that I'm live. I really only care if I'm live on YouTube. Okay, I'm live. All right, so, hey, everybody. How you doing? My name is Sean Christopher Jenkins, a.k.a. Dr. J. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Upload Past Crossroads. Uh, and on my, it's really on my right, but on my left on video, I have Justin Lee Howell, a.k.a. Einstein with me again. And we're doing a video on a quote of the day. So I have a playlist on my YouTube channel titled Quote of the Day, Quotes of the Day. And so I'm about to share my screen so you guys can see that playlist on my YouTube channel. So you make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, upload past, uh, upload past Crossroads for way more content. But I occasionally I do videos on quotes of the day. So this is the playlist. So check out this playlist on YouTube channel. And so typically that playlist is just talking about all the quotes that inspire me because I like to quotes just do something to me like every, every single time i see a quote like the first time i see it like it just strikes a nerve in me i receive a revelation a lot of times so that's what the quotes of the day playlist is all about we're just breaking down quotes that we see for the first time and we're elaborating on it sometimes false quote false quotes even just stuff like that right so check out that playlist for more but anyways we're doing a video on that today uh and today i, I made a post actually so normally typically i find a quote from somewhere and I repost it on my uh, social media platforms. But this time around, like a quote just came into my in brain, came into my mind. And I had a revelation. And I was just, I said this quote in my head. So I want you guys to see it. Some people had questions about it today on my, YouTube, on my Facebook page and my Twitter. So I wanted to go ahead and do a video on it. So here goes the quote. So if you make sure to also follow me on Twitter right here. So trouble don't last. Uh, as you guys know, my account, my 40K account got hacked uh, and that person got suspended. So hopefully Twitter realizes that my account was stolen and giving it back because that's 40K followers, man. Like, oh, my gosh, I wonder what's going to happen when I get it back. But anyways, guys, you can follow me on my Twitter. But one thing I tweeted today is it was this quote right here. And the quote is your relationships are not working out because you have the wrong idea about what, what love really is. See, that was a quote that came in my mind today. Your relationships are not working out because you have the wrong idea about what love really is. And so somebody asked, you know, if I could explain what my idea of love is. So what's my perspective of love? Because I think they were confused by the quote that I posted. And then somebody else said that they want to know. And then on my Facebook page, uh, somebody also says they want to know as well. Let me go to my actual Facebook page. They, they asked basically right on it. Yeah. So they said, tell me more. So this quote was confusing to some people. So I'm going to say it again. So we're all on the same page. So everybody can just remember the quote when I'm not sharing my screen. So the quote again is your relationships are not working out because you have the wrong idea about what love really is. All right. So, Justin, I'll let you take the floor. Oh, Justin left. I don't know where Justin went. Hello? I mean, I can hear it. Yeah, I can hear you. I just can't see you no more on video. But it's oh. okay. You're still here. So... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. As long as you can hear me, we're good. Right. And I like the oh, like there's a there's a lot to unpack with it. Uh, I I just heard about it today, man. If I had another day to like dig into this one, I bet we could come up with a lot of stuff. But that's that's really true because like uh, as I was telling you before, the live stream started like um, for us Christians, we know that God is love. But I feel like we tend to say love is God. And what that means is that our own idea of what love is becomes our God. It becomes our idol. It becomes what we think is best. But, like, man, that's the same with, like, uh, just saying, oh, just be a good person. Like, what does good even mean? What does love even mean? Everyone has, like, their own definition. Um, and, unfortunately, that can cause, like, when you have something that uh, has no foundation to it, when you have something that's so shaky as your feelings, then it's going to be constantly going to change. It's constantly going to be pe keep people on their toes. And when you're in relation, you need something stable. Like, that's why that's why Paul was saying to the Corinthians, like, build your foundation on something that lasts. Don't build it on something that's going to burn or disappear. 
um, after a generation or two, but build it something that lasts. And that's why we say God is love. Like God is eternal. We want love to be something that's not going to change. It's not going to be shifting. It's not going to um, surprise you. Like if you're in a, like when you're in a relationship, like I guarantee your significant other doesn't want to be guessing how you're going to love them each and every day. They want something stable. They want like a commitment. Yeah, passion is, passion and all is like great to have and always great to like keep alive. But to keep a long standing relationship, you need something stable. You need something eternal. Right. Yeah, man, it's so much with this quote, man. Like, I'm going to read it again for people. Uh, I've been sharing my screen the whole time while you talk because you're not on video unless you're on video now. Uh, but um, the quote is, your relationships are not working out because you have the wrong idea about what love really is. And so I titled this lesson, Justin, um, the main reason your relationships are not working out. Well, actually, the main reason why your relationship's not working out. You know, because it's not plural. So it's really because of Jesus. That's what it boils down to. Your foundation, right? Like you were saying. And um, that's, that's powerful because, you know, what are you looking for in love? Like, what is your idea of love? Like, that guy's hey, I'm gonna. I got to share my screen again so everybody can see what he said. Like, it, he, he really answered his, the answer I would have gave, he already, he asked the question like that. Like, my answer was what he asked. So he said, if I've. If I may ask, what is your love? What is love in your own perspective? I, okay, I think he wrote that wrong. If I may ask, what is love in your own perspective? Yeah, that's that's what he asked. So everybody's that's the that's the key. If you have the wrong idea of love, if you have the wrong perspective of love, <laughs> if you don't have the right concept of what love is, you're gonna love the wrong people. That's what it boils down to. Like I literally. I did a video, uh, I did do a video. I was on a, you remember I said, not too long ago, I was on a radio program, right? Uh, uh -huh. Last year, like in March or something, or January, I was on a radio program. Yeah, y'all gotta watch this video, man, right here. Like, watch this video when I was on a radio program. The person literally asked me, you know, uh, I can't remember. She was just asking me like dating advice, relationship advice and stuff like that. But essentially she asked, you know, what is love? like? How how do you find love? You know, <laughs> how do you get into a great relationship? The, it, the key starts with you. Love starts with you. And that is so deep because, like, love doesn't just start with you. It starts with your relationship with God because God is love. Right? That's a scripture verse. Everybody knows that scripture verse. So love begins with God. Only God really knows what love is because he created it. He is love, right? So <laughs> if you don't know who God is, how are you going to know what love is? Right. That's that's the first thing. So if you don't know who God is, you don't know what love is. Right. So that's why celebrities, famous people like people that don't know God, don't have a relationship with him. With him that's why they're in eight different relationships. Uh, that's why they're in eight different marriages. That's why they divorce so much. That's why no relationship that they're ever in works out because they don't have God. But, you know, there's some Christians that are like that, too. Right. And that's that's where another another factor comes into play. The wrong idea of what love really is going back to that quote like for christians you may know who god is you may know what love is right but you have the wrong idea of what love does what love is right because love is action right so uh <laughs> <a lot> of, <laughs> that's so deep too because like it, that is, yeah. it's a double-edged sword right like you you can't your love need to be unconditional right but it can't be too i won't say it can't be too unconditional I'm just saying some people don't deserve your love, right? So you got to know when you're wasting your time and you got to know when uh, uh, when to cut ties with somebody, you know, or when somebody's not worth your, you know, where somebody just abuses your value, abuses your worth, you know, you get you get what I'm saying. Like, that's one one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is, is like, you know, which, uh, what do you want in love, right? So what are you looking for? And does that person measure up? Is that the standard? Right. And you should be looking for Christ likeness. Like you should be looking some, for somebody that can love you like God loves the church. You should be looking for somebody that has God's love in them. Because why would you want to be what does Baal, like uh, Paul says, what does Baal have to do with God? What does Satan and his worshipers and pagans 
have to do with spirituality, well, have to do with, you know, godliness and righteousness, you know, nothing, you know, you can't be unequally yoked, right? So if you have the wrong idea of what love, you're going to be unequally yoked with somebody trying to drag them along in life, trying to pull them along with you, trying to make them into an image that they're not, right? And that's not what love is. You should already be in a relationship with somebody that's equally yoked with you, that measures up to, you know, your standard of love, God's standards of love, to where you don't got to drag them around. Y'all literally meet each other where you both are, and you can work with each other continually through life. Like, it's deep, right? Love is not something easy. It's not an easy answer. It's different for all of us. You just got to find what that is for you. In order to know what that is for you, you got to know who God is. Because when you know who God is, you know what your identity is. And if you know what your identity is, you know exactly what you need for a wife or, or for a husband. You, like, it's so deep, man. <laughs> so deep. I went all over the place. I love, the, I, love how you, yeah, I love how you said love is an action. Because it really is. Like, a lot of times we think love is just a feeling. And that's, like, that's, love is a feeling is actually a very recent thing as well. Like, and I think several places in the Bible this actually translated to something more close to loving kindness. Like you almost make a choice to love someone. If someone like the Bible is all about forgiveness, but you don't just forgive somebody, you make the choice to forgive somebody about forgiving. Man, I I'd only forgive like five percent of the people who wronged me. I have to wake up every day to choose to love my family or choose to love my uh, fiance. It's not that it's not that I don't naturally love them, but if I relied on my feelings or a whim, gosh, that that would limit me so much. That would limit our love so much if we off of a whim or love based on our feelings, because feelings are transient, man. They change every few years. But if we make that conscious decision to actually go through with the action of loving somebody, I think that doesn't just uh, that doesn't just affect the people that we show love to. That transforms your heart as well. Yeah. Like there's something called neuroplasticity. It's every time you perform an action or have a thought, then it becomes easier and easier to do. I think we talked about that in relation to negative emotions. Same with love. The more times you show or practice or choose to love it makes it easier for your brain to just be able to love people and i think that again, when you can make it natural and sincere i think that makes a huge difference in relationships like people can tell when you're sincere or just faking it right yeah man that's that's deep right there man like um so first First of all, you, your video went out. Uh, I mean, your audio went out a little bit, but I think everybody got the gist of what you were saying. Um, but like, yeah, man, like love is action. So um, what are you looking for? So if somebody's not, not give you the love that you deserve. And that's loaded question. What's the love that you deserve? It's exactly what you what you desire, your love language, which that goes down a rabbit hole. What's your love language? Do you know what that is? And are they willing to love you the way that you want to be loved and not the way that 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 they want to love you, right? That they interpret what love is. Like it's a it's a slippery slope. It's it's a complex thing. Like this ain't easy. Like you gotta really count the costs, like Jesus says, right? When especially when it comes to love, and especially with who you choose to marry, man. Like people's relationships don't work out. Most of their relationships don't work out. You know, a lot of marriages failed. I, I remember back in like 2013, they said like 75% of marriages end a divorce. I'm pretty sure it's higher than that now. I, it was, that's ridiculous, man. 75%, it was something crazy, man. I don't remember what it was, but I know it's way worse than that now. But like, yeah, stuff don't work out because people don't know what love is, man. Like they had the wrong idea, the wrong perspective of what love does, what love does. You know, like, or, or going back to the love language, yeah, that goes. If you, uh, I was actually looking through that book the other day, and he gave a really good perspective. Like, if you and your spouse or significant other are speaking different languages, that love isn't going to go through. Mm -hmm. You guys have to be on the same page, and you can't just say, Oh, love is 
however you feel, however you choose to define it. No, you need you need the same definition. You need the same language to communicate with you. Right. Hey, man, I just realized your number's on the screen. I hope people don't call it. Like, <laughs> okay, no, you'll, you'll end up blocking it, right, if it's too weird? Yeah. <laughs> I already get so much junk email. It's fine. Okay, cool. Like I, I just realized it, man. I was like, man, that is awful. Like when my YouTube channel does blow up, and where this video causes it to blow up, like, oh my gosh. Okay. Man, if people want to talk more about Jesus or love, I'd be fine with that. Just call me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what you said. Like, what about love? Like, love is action. Like, I was trying to. I had it because it came in segments. Like I told you, it went in and out. But I. I had, yeah. I was yeah. Saying- just the main points was you had to choose to love. Like right, love yeah. in the Bible is sometimes translated as loving kindness, and that's just not a that's not just a feeling. That's like a call to action. Like you, like feelings are transient. Uh, but love is supposed to be this eternal thing, and if you link love to feelings, you're severely limiting it. Mm. Wow. Did you get most of that? Yeah, I heard all of it this time. Oh, good. Awesome. Yeah, that's the thing, man. People, man, that is that's another deep thing, man. Like, is love based on how you feel? Is it based on you know your emotions? Like, people always uh, one thing people always say when relationships don't work out, you know, we just fell out of love, or the love wasn't there anymore, or yeah. just something like that. Like, you gotta you gotta approach a relationship worst case scenario. Like, if the love isn't there anymore. If this person at their worst, like something bad happens, can I still love them? And the answer is no, then you shouldn't be with them. You know, like <laughs> it's that simple. Like, why would you make a commitment and a vow to God? If we're I'm talking about marriage, right? Make Why would you make a vow to God and to your family and to their family, to the whole world saying, I'm going to love this person until death do us part. And you don't really mean it. Right. Right. So, yeah, and like, because you fell out of love, like, you know, I can only imagine how God feels sometimes with us. Like, you know, we're going through Isaiah uh, 49, right? And we see that Jesus got discouraged. You know, even Jesus got discouraged. Even Jesus wanted to give up. Even Jesus didn't think what he was doing meant a hill of beans sometimes, right? Especially with who he was working with and who he was dealing with. Because the disciples failed him from time to time. But did he stop loving them? Like, and that's Jesus. Like, right? That's his disciples. Imagine he had a wife. Like, what? How? How amazing of a husband he will be. That's the standard. We're supposed men, especially. We're called to love a wife like Christ loved the church. So that means our love's unconditional. That means our love ain't based on what the other person does. That means, you know, no matter uh, what happens in a relationship, I'm gonna love that person through my actions. I may not feel like doing it. But I'm gonna do it anyways, right? That's the right perspective of a relationship. Like that that helps a relationship to work out. But just having a negative mindset when something goes wrong, you want to quit. Jesus stuff was going wrong with Jesus' ministry all the time, like we learned about in Isaiah 49. But he did he give up. <laughs> he wanted to, you know. So yeah, man. Yeah, that quote, man. Did you have anything else, Justin? Yeah, oh, hold on. I had something right during something you had said as well. Yeah, and like having God as love is like having Jesus and God as an example, just saying God is love. We can see God as an example of what love is. And I think that's a lot easier than just having a list of, if someone were to ask you, what do you think love is? Like there's no way we can make a list that encompasses all the things that love should entail. Like, everything we should forgive or the way we should treat people like that's yeah it should be a list longer than a mile but like since we have god or more importantly jesus as a demonstration of love like we're able to follow by example which is a lot easier than coming up with the things you're looking for in a significant other kind of list right I think you, I think, oh, and I guess one last thing. I am going, I have been doing like a premarital counseling as well, oh. just to prepare ourselves through marriage. Oh, yeah, it's been, it's been great. But one thing he said, which both my fiance and I do, 
is I guess like uh, our our definitions of discussions in a relationship where it's like how can we prove how can we prove ourselves right or how can we prove the other wrong which is not the way to do it in case you didn't guess but like a big part of love is like humbling yourself as well like Jesus is the ultimate example of being on the throne being in heaven and humbling himself to a vessel of the vessel of a servant just for us so when you're even when you're having a discussion that you love there's like no way you're not going to argue with someone that you love but if you can prepare yourself to still um discuss things civilly and humble yourself and not necessarily give up on your viewpoint but just leave room to consider the other person's feelings i think that goes a long way i feel like just humbling yourself is a huge example of what jesus demonstrated man that's deep man humbling yourself man that's deep man your relationships aren't working out because you think that you should be served and you don't have and you don't have to serve the other person like you care more about what you want and not what the other person needs like that is awful that's that's exactly the american culture and what everybody does in a relationship man that's that's why any relationship i was in before work out because it's really both parties both parties meant something different yeah i mean it. because for relationships people are always thinking about what can the other person do for them like what can what can my fiance do for me or how is this rent relationship going to benefit benefit me that's the wrong way to think about because suddenly your desires are entering in the picture which not to say it's bad enough desires but if it's centered on yourself that's gonna that's gonna open up a huge can of worms or a huge huge list of flesh fleshy desires but if you're concentrating on somebody else if you're focused on the happiness or the joy of somebody else, I think that's where God, I think that's the place God wants you to be. Suddenly, your mindset is where God wants you to be. Because think about it, the Trinity is a relationship in itself. It's God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Like, the just the facts that they all correspond with each other, if we're an image of God, that means we have the capacity of uh, being in a relationship with other people and concentrating on other people. So if we can't be focusing on ourselves, because then that opens up to what are the desires of our sinful hearts. If you are going into marriage with the mindset of, I want this person to be, I want this other person to be happy, suddenly your desires shift to where God wants you to be. Mm. Nah, that, was, that was way more wordy than I was about. Nah, man, you're good, man. That's what we need. All right, so I'm going to say the quote again. I want to see if you had anything else you wanted to add. So your relationships are not working out because you have the wrong idea about what love really is. So I you, think sometimes relationships don't. I think relationships are just hard in general, too. Like, even if you do have an idea of what love is, you should know that sometimes relationships are just not going to work out very well or going to go through like a dry chapter. Right. But that's that's also a part of love, though, is that you recognize that we're all broken people. We're not going to be on the same page right away. Mm -hmm. So even knowing what love is, knowing what God, who God is, isn't going to be a quick fix. It's going to take a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Man, you preaching now, man. <laughs> I, I kind of like, yeah, I kind of like doing the, uh, yeah, I kind of like hearing the quote just a few minutes before we started talking because now it's just naturally speaking instead of like trying to come up with all these notes. So, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is, a, I like that quote though. That's a good quote. Man, I'm glad you liked it. Like, guys, like when I did that quote, first of all, the quote right here, uh, what this video is all about your relationships are not working out because you have the wrong idea about what love really is like at first when i before i even posted it i knew like this was a complex quote like it came in my spirit 
I this is literally my quote. Like I got from God. Like I felt like it, it was just you know how your brain just be working and quotes just come in your brain sometimes like powerful, profound things. And this is what came in my brain. And like when I said it to myself, I was like, yeah, man, that's deep. But then when I posted it, right after I posted, it, I saw this guy just immediately write that question down. And then the other guy on my Facebook page, he asked a question, like, tell me more. Like, so I was like, dang, is what I said complicated? Like, is it too, you know, is this dumb? Is it false? Like, because, I mean, you could look at it in a negative way. You know, your relationships are not working out because you have the wrong idea about what love really is. Like, what? That's why relationships don't work out? No, it's not. But, I mean, if you look at the root, I feel like if you just go to the root cause. That's what it boils down to. Because half of the people we date and we end up in relationships with, you know, we shouldn't be with to begin with. We're literally wasting our time. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like, so when I when I, when I I came in my, you know, when I had that revelation, I, I really thought, like, yeah, man, like, that, that quote's dope. But I just feel like a lot, it went over a lot of people's heads. So I think, uh, yeah, I think it's a good quote. I, I think it is good to dig into it, though. Because not everyone may know what uh, what love is exactly. Because man, we've been we've been bombarded with so much media that tells us how relationships should go or what love is. Man, we have to unlearn that. I don't blame those guys for asking because, like, it really is a mystery to today's culture. Right. Hey, man, the Bible and God's a mystery too. That's what they need to figure out. That's that's what man, that's, that's where love true. is. <laughs> Hey, that's true too. Even if you know who God is and you spend every day in the Bible, like relationships are still gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. And that that leads to something else. You know, I always tend to say it, so you'll probably get annoyed, but like, like Genesis 2 18 is one of my favorite Bible. Before I was with Maya, this Bible verse was on my wall and it just touched me so much. So I'm gonna read different Bible versions just so everybody can get it. But I'm gonna start with the King James. And the Lord said, and the Lord God said, It is not good for that a man should be alone, I will make him a helpmate for him. He also said, I will make him a suitable helper. I will make him a person who's uh, just right for him, who's suitable for him, right? Who compliments him, who's comparable to him, who's corresponding to him, who compliments him. Like, these are the different versions, man. A suitable partner. Like, that is so powerful. Like, your relationships aren't working out because you're you have the wrong puzzle piece. You're trying to fit a puzzle piece that's not meant to be there, right? Literally, we just saw in Genesis 2.18, like one of God's promises is, you know, it's not good for a man to be alone. If you're called to be with somebody, if you're called to be in a relationship, because me and Justin did a video on that in 1 Corinthians 7. Like, y'all just check out that playlist on my YouTube channel. I'm not going to show it right now. But 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we talked about that. And Paul said, you know, some people are called to be single. Some people are called to be in a relationship, right? Everybody's different. You don't have to marry somebody if you don't want to be with somebody. But that don't mean you can go having sex with people, right, and ruining their lives. So that's another reason why relationships aren't working out, because you're you're with people who have the wrong motives and intentions and don't really care to be in a relationship with you. Like what happened with sad old Michael B. Jordan. Michael B., if you're listening, man, I love you, brother. Like, <laughs> Justin, did you hear what happened with Michael B. Jordan? No, what happened? I don't know. I like Michael B. Jordan. Did something bad happen? Well, uh, Lori Harvey, so Steve Harvey's uh, daughter, was dating him. Okay. I think she dated yeah. him for like a year. Yeah. And, you know, he's like 34 or something, 33, 35, something like that. So he's he's about to, he's about ready to wind down. And Lori Harvey's 25. So just that alone, like <laughs> the age gap. <laughs> yeah. And, pretty, yeah, yeah, and a little bit. I should so show some memes like Maya. Maya, are you listening? Maya, yeah, she's listening. Text me the memes that I sent to you. Text me all the memes that I sent to you on Facebook so I can show everybody on video. But like, yeah, Justin, uh, there are so many memes and people have been talking about it online like crazy, just about how like they feel they either on Lori Harvey's side or they're on Michael B's side. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. That's interesting. I can see both sides. Yeah. So, okay. so like Lori Harvey, she's 25, right? So like some people yeah. think like she should, be, she's 25. She don't have to settle down for nothing. She needs to have fun, live it up while she's young, you know, and all that stuff. But then other people are like, man, it's Michael B. Like 
he has a job, he's black, he's handsome, he look good, he you know, he's a role model, like he's all these things, right? Like, and so like that's like the perfect catch. And you're like letting it go. Like, and, and then you know how some women are like, Man, this is what I want in a relationship. I want, you know, I want that just kind of yeah, you you trying to say something? Yeah, just because he's 34 doesn't mean he can't have fun too. <laughs> <laughs> and no, no, no. Maybe who knows? Maybe Lori is just uh maybe she just wants a good stable man. It, it's, it's yeah. Who whatever, knows? Whatever, work, whatever works for them. I don't judge them. They do what they want. If they can make it work it out. Yeah. I, I love to see Harvey and I love Michael B. Jordan. So I don't know. If you put them, put the two together, even if it is his daughter, I kind of like that. Mhm. Oh yeah. yeah, send me. The- so I'm curious on what people have to say about it. Man, yeah, they're going crazy, man. Like, you know, the women that want to have fun and play around, they're, they're all on Lori Harvey's side. Everybody else that's, like, actually cares for relationships, they're on Michael B's side. So it, it's getting yeah. ugly, man. But, like, yeah, that goes back to the quote, man. That goes literally back to the quote of this whole entire video, man. Your relationships are not working out because you have the wrong idea about what love really is. And, like, that goes back to even Michael B's situation. Like, I don't know the situation. Nobody knows the situation better than he does. And, you know, even when you're in a relationship, when it just, when it's fresh and you just break up, you're still trying to figure out what happened. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, like, he don't even know probably. And Lori Harvey don't even know. Like, because who knows the heart? Like, the heart's the most complicated thing. You don't know what you like. You don't know what you like and what you need. Like, God knows, right? So, we have the wrong idea of what we really need and want in a relationship. So, like, and then we don't know people's... It's a two-way street in a relationship. So the other person don't have the right motives, intentions. Or, if, you know, if they're just in it for a different reason. And the foundation... That goes back to the very first thing you said, Justin. If the foundation ain't firm, stable, and it's a solid foundation for both of you guys to stand on. And whether any storm in life, like Jesus said with a good and wise builder, you know, build on a solid ground, you know, when the storms of life comes, you know, when the adversity and the hardships come in a relationship, you'll be able to stand. But if it's on any other ground, it's not going to be able to stand, man. Your foundation is everything. So that's why Christ is the best foundation in a relationship. So if you have the wrong idea about Christ, you definitely going to have the wrong idea about what you need in a relationship, marriage, or anything in life, but especially that area. But, oh, you can say something, Justin? No, I was agreeing with you. Oh, okay, but yeah, man, like I, I, we, I'm pretty sure we can pick out more stuff to say, man. But I think we did enough with that. Unless you had anything else you want to add? No, I think I, I think I said all the major points I wanted to say. Okay, cool. Well, actually, I want to do another video, Justin. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about it in a minute. Um, but okay, uh, everybody, I hope and pray that you guys enjoyed this video that me and uh, Justin did. Uh, he's driving to alabama right now so he's on uh he's calling me on the phone so hopefully you guys heard him pretty well on the call um uh, i got him uh on the audio on my laptop so that should help with the uh the sound uh pretty should make the sound pretty good but anyways guys make sure to go to my youtube channel uh and subscribe to it you know upload past crossroads i also have a podcast on my every podcast platform you can think of i'm streaming live on my YouTube, of course. I'm also on Facebook and LinkedIn streaming. So, Sean Christopher Jenkins, that's my name. Uh, you can follow me also on my Twitter, Snap, Instagram, and TikTok. Trouble Don't Worry from Twitter right now. And my other Instagram page is my underscore daily underscore Bible. And then my Tumblr is Trouble Don't Last Number One. And then also, uh, yeah, check out that video about, uh, you know, relationships and that's another day and advice a video if you love relationship advice and you need anything like that so yeah this is my youtube channel again this is justin lee howell's youtube channel so einstein this is his youtube channel right here so y'all subscribe to that and then also uh check out this playlist quotes of the day for more quotes of the day so that was what this playlist was all about and relationship advice so check out that playlist as well and i have another playlist titled toxic relationships so I got a lot of relationship stuff on my YouTube channel. So y'all just check all that out. So uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Like, comment, share. Uh, if you have any, any questions, you can DM me. You can comment on this video. Uh, you have, and I'll try to do a video on the questions that you ask, especially with Justin, because it just it's it's easier to do it with him. And uh, yeah, guys, 
uh, happy Saturday. No, it's Friday night. It's not even Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> so happy Friday night. I'm pretty sure some people are living it up. That's great. But, you know, when you're serving the Lord, all you can do is study so you can teach. So that's my life. <laughs> Did that sound depressing, Justin? <laughs> And you get the Michael B. Jordan's uh, Michael B. Jordan's age, so I guess you're starting to wind down too. <laughs> man, I guess, man. So, all right, guys, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Thanks for tuning in, man. All right, peace out. Y'all stay blessed.